Australia has dreamed of having a high-speed rail for decades. Imagine traveling from Sydney to Melbourne in just a few hours. Sounds like a game changer, right? Yet, despite all the talk, plans, and promises, we still don't have one. Every time we get close, it feels like the idea gets pushed aside. So why can't Australia make high-speed rail happen? What's stopping us from joining the likes of Japan and France where fast trains are the norm? In this video, we'll dive into the harsh reality of why high-speed rail seems impossible here. But before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell for the latest updates. Over the years, there have been several attempts to get a high-speed rail project off the ground in Australia, especially the Sydney-Melbourne corridor. In the 1980s and 1990s, excitement grew around the possibility of fast trains connecting our major cities. Reports were written, proposals made, and studies conducted. At various points, it seemed like we were finally going to join countries like Japan and France. In places like Japan, the famous Shinkansen has been running since the 1960s, revolutionizing how people travel. France's TGV also proved to be a massive success, linking cities with impressive speed and efficiency. So why did those countries succeed, and why have we never managed to follow through? The answer lies in the complex mix of challenges Australia faces. Challenges that make high-speed rail seem more like a distant dream than a reality. Australia's geography is one of the biggest hurdles when it comes to high-speed rail. Unlike Europe or Asia, where cities are often close together, Australia has vast distances between its major population centers. For example, the distance between Sydney and Melbourne is around 900 kilometers, with large stretches of empty land in between. Building a high-speed rail line across these remote areas is a massive engineering and logistical challenge. The terrain isn't easy either. Australia's landscape includes mountains, deserts, and areas prone to extreme weather conditions, which all add to the complexity and cost of construction. Just laying down the tracks would require a massive amount of earthworks, tunneling, and other costly infrastructure. In comparison, countries like Japan have relatively dense populations and compact cities, making it easier and more cost-effective to build and operate high-speed rail. Their rail systems connect cities that are much closer together, making it easier to justify the enormous investment. Here in Australia, though, the sheer size of the country and our spread-out population make the economics far more difficult. The cost of building and maintaining the infrastructure across such vast distances would be astronomical, which is why every proposal we've had so far has been either shelved or abandoned. One of the biggest roadblocks to building high-speed rail in Australia has been government indecision and constant changes in political leadership. Every time a new government comes into power, priorities shift, and projects that were once at the forefront get put on the back burner. The idea of high-speed rail is often talked about during elections, but once the campaign ends, the plans are often shelved. This lack of consistency means progress is constantly stalled. Another major issue is the tug-of-war between state and federal governments. For any major infrastructure project like this, the funding and cooperation have to come from both sides. Unfortunately, these two levels of government don't always agree, leading to delays and confusion over who is responsible for what. Without clear, united support from all levels of government, high-speed rail projects keep getting caught in bureaucratic red tape. What's even worse is the lack of long-term vision. Governments tend to focus on projects that bring short-term gains, things that can be completed within their term to show quick results. But high-speed rail is a long-term investment, often taking decades to plan, fund, and build. This kind of forward-thinking infrastructure simply doesn't fit into short political cycles, making it difficult to get the necessary momentum to see it through. The cost of building high-speed rail in Australia is a massive barrier. Previous studies, like the 2013 high-speed rail study by the government, estimated the cost of building a line between Sydney and Melbourne at a staggering $114 billion. That's an enormous investment, especially for a project that doesn't guarantee a big return in the near future. One of the main reasons high-speed rail is so expensive here is Australia's low population density compared to places like Europe or Asia. Countries with high-speed rail typically have densely packed populations that can fill trains and keep the system profitable. In Australia, however, the population is spread out, making it harder to justify the cost. 
the potential number of passengers simply might not be enough to make the system financially viable. The private sector has also been reluctant to invest in high-speed rail because of the high risks and long timelines. Building the infrastructure alone could take decades, and investors would have to wait even longer to see any significant return on their money. Without substantial government backing or incentives, private companies don't see enough financial upside to make the massive commitment needed to get high-speed rail off the ground in Australia. This combination of high costs, low returns, and lack of private interest keeps the project in limbo. One of the key reasons high-speed rail hasn't taken off in Australia is the country's strong air travel industry. Domestic flights between cities like Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane are frequent, fast, and relatively affordable. For many people, hopping on a plane is the quickest and most convenient way to travel long distances, making high-speed rail less appealing. Additionally, Australia has a deep-rooted car culture, with extensive road infrastructure that continues to grow. Many Australians prefer to drive, and governments regularly invest in expanding highways and improving roads. This focus on roads and air travel means high-speed rail often gets pushed aside. Let's not forget the airlines and road infrastructure lobbies. Both industries would face serious competition if high-speed rail were introduced, and they actively work against it. They have significant influence on government decisions, making it even harder for rail projects to gain traction. Another hurdle is the potential environmental impact of building high-speed rail. The construction would require large-scale land clearing, potentially disrupting wildlife habitats and sensitive ecosystems. For a country with unique flora and fauna, these concerns are not taken lightly. Environmental groups have raised alarms over how such a project could harm biodiversity. On the social side, public opinion is divided. Some Australians see high-speed rail as a luxury, not a necessity, especially with air travel and road options already in place. Without strong public support, the pressure on governments to push forward with high-speed rail isn't strong enough. For many, it's hard to justify spending billions on a rail system when there are other pressing issues to tackle. To wrap up, the challenges facing high-speed rail in Australia are enormous. The geographical distance, combined with political indecision, financial constraints, and social concerns make the project seem nearly impossible. Add in the competition from airlines and roads, and the idea of high-speed rail becomes more of a pipe dream than a reality. So, will Australia ever see a high-speed rail network, or is it doomed to remain a fantasy? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Is there a future for fast trains here, or are we better off sticking to planes and cars?